Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. This episode is going to be a continuation of the engine safety function that we just did primarily with the AM Infinity. And because I normally tune Infinities and Haltex, this is why I kind of hang out in those particular ECUs. Other ECUs, such as Motec, of course, Fuel Tech. Most of the, the bigger ECU companies are going to have some sort of engine safeties that you can do. One that's really obvious that we all know that all factory ECUs have is boost cut. Whether it's an airflow based value with a MAF or an actual pressure value, if it's a MAP sensor based car or possibly it, it's a hybrid like the Evo 10 as an example. Um, usually they, they will use airflow, but at any rate, there's always going to be that safety because even when we're racing, there's never really an excuse to have a boost cut off. Now, maybe we're going to run kind of close to the end of a sensor. That's a real good reason to have one actually, because you don't want to have a car going off the column. If you have a five bar sensor and you run over 57 pounds of boost, you're out of range. So having a boost cut at 55 or getting a bigger sensor is a, a good strategy. If you know that you have enough injector for 50 PSI, why would your car ever be able to hit 80 pounds of boost? Silly. Set the boost cut. Because in the end, maybe you leave yourself a 10% window where, yeah, it'd go a little lean, but not detonate a block in half or take out a bunch of components. Anyway, things to think about. So we're going to look at the, the Haltech. Open up the software here. What we're going to start with is if you have the NSP software already on an Elite or Nexus, it's going to be F4, and then you're going to look for engine protection. You're going to turn it on if it was an ESP. But under engine functions in the NSP software, engine protection, you go and turn that on. That would be right up here. I'll back up just one screen under engine function, because it's always the main title is the one you're going to look for. You come down, you find it under here, protection. Awesome, engine protection. You should also have a main RPM limiter. You would never want to over rev your motor knowingly. So two safeties that everything's going to have to start with, or everything should have to start with. So let's switch to engine protection real fast. Haltech does something that I really, really like. And that is that it has severity levels. So you will set a DTC. You can make it current in the drive cycle. You can make it current past and present. So for the, the level one, usually it's good enough to just have it this drive cycle. But then it gives you options. Target Lambda enrichment. So for level one where it's low low uh, priority, maybe a sensor doesn't read less than half a volt or something, or it just managed to do that for a split second and freak something out. Um, we're not going to richen it up, we're probably not going to change the boost, not going to retard ignition timing. You can add a rev limit, so fuel cut, 6,000 RPM. Okay, great. Level two, maybe we're going to get a little more aggressive. We're not going to add fuel if that happens. But uh, we are going to drop boost 50% wastegate duty cycle. We are going to pull two and a half degrees of timing. We're going to lower the RPM rev limit. Then level three, we just keep going. Maybe we're going to richen it up a half a point. This might be something like oil pressure. Your oil pressure sensor fails. So we're going to pull all the boost out. We're going to pull timing out. I have it where the rev limit set at 1,000 RPM. Now, in the past, I've actually set that at zero or 350 so the car turns off. And so something that's interesting is if you set current drive cycle, you can key cycle the car and start it back up. So if you have a 2JZ with a bad oil pump, not a bad motor, just a bad oil pump, you might be driving through a parking lot and car turns off. Key cycle, car starts right back up, everything's good till you hit that limit. And... If you did current and past, you have to reset the check engine light before the car will restart. 
if you have the rev limit set really low. Regardless of how you set it up, that has to get taken care of in order to return to normal operation. So it forces you to look at it. Now, when we go up to sensors, we're going to see how this all works. Each of these tabs is going to have a diagnostics tab where you set what codes you want to come on. So raw minimum, I don't want it to be less than 0 0.25 volts. But I don't need to ruin all my funds, so maybe I'll just do level 2. This is uh, especially good for cars that have clips that hold the TPS on. And then possibly you uh, lose them. You don't go figure out a way to make a spare, zip tie it down, whatever. Um, this will keep you from doing anything silly until you fix it, figure out what's going on. And these throw actual OBD2 codes. So you can Google them if you don't know what they are, which is really nice. They do have a, a list so you can see. So that's cool. Um, so let's go to oil pressure, diagnostics. This one I happen to have set up minimum value. If it's zero or half a volt, I want it to be level three while it's operating, obviously. And then it has an operating minimum table that I have to be at least 1500 RPM. I have X amount of delay before it sets the code and it has to use both of these. I can set it either or but then I can set minimum map, I can set minimum TPS. Obviously these are supplied values, but you might wanna be a little bit more detailed on how you set it up if you're gonna use this code in particular. The max, if it goes too high, that doesn't really ruin my day. Um, and that's if somehow it's a complete open circuit. So maybe you would do something, maybe you would do level two for that as well. And then you don't want it going over 4.9 volts. Give yourself a little bit of room. But it gives you some ideas, things that you can set up. So the integration part of it is very simple. All you got to remember is engine functions. Turn on the engine protection. At the same time, turn on your main rev limit. It should be on in most pre-made maps. So that that's all set up. But that's also a good thing to, to go look at here. How we have that one, this particular car. This is just a base map that I've been doing for my Nissan. So I have it versus flex content and coolant temp. You can set the axes to whatever you want. Coolant temp is always a good one as we covered in the AEM. I'm going to do flex in this because maybe I want to spring it different than I would normally for a gas car, so that if I'm on zero or 20, it's gonna start boost creeping, or if the car did boost creep, you could set that rev limit low so that you can't ever get to the, uh, an unsafe manifold pressure. Maybe, maybe uh, 6,500, it goes higher than you can control safely for the octane. Great, so if it was on, on low, percentage you could do something like that and then as it starts to get higher percentage of ethanol to where the boost creep isn't a big deal maybe you start bringing the rev limit up just some ideas but as it as we can see having a safety is going to allow us to save probably the single biggest investment after the car in my instagram somebody pointed out that it might not be the biggest investment but Definitely the one you use the most, the one that's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars and downtime, possibly ruin a season. So why not do something really, really simple and set up safeties? And when you, for instance, have Haltech and you're doing transmission control, if you add line pressure, guess what you can do? You can come back up to the sensors. Where's it at here? Sensors. Thought I saw it. Oh yeah, there it is. Tram transmission line pressure sensor. Diagnostic. So we can do all the same stuff like we did with oil pressure. You can save your automatic transmission. One more thing to think about. Kind of cool, huh? 
transmission oil temp, you can do the same stuff. Basically, it's endless. If you can think of it, you could probably make a check engine light for it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed, it definitely helps the channel out. Please consider doing so. If you have a friend that might like this content, please consider sharing it with them. Give me a thumbs up if it's something you like. Give me a thumbs down if it's not. But I do ask, please give me a reason. I'm not going to flame you. Give me a comment why you didn't like it. What I could do better. Maybe something you want to see instead. Um, not necessarily a reason to give me a thumbs down, but comment. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, ring the... or click the bell icon and that will notify you as new content is added. Anyway guys, take care.